A top-secret study leaked to The New York Times by famed Pentagon Papers whistleblower Daniel Ellsberg reveals the U.S. military pressed then-President Dwight Eisenhower to prepare a nuclear first strike against mainland China during the Taiwan Strait crisis of 1958. The document shows U.S. military planners were ready to accept the risk that the Soviet Union would launch its own nuclear retaliation on behalf of its ally China, and that millions of people would die. Daniel Ellsberg told The New York Times he decided to disclose the document now due to rising tensions between the United States and China over Taiwan. Senate Democrats have introduced a bill that would trim $73 billion from the U.S. nuclear arsenal over the next decade. This is a MACE missile designed to carry a nuclear warhead. During the Cold War, the United States secretly installed nuclear weapons at this launch pad in Okinawa. Most of them were aimed at China. Today, the nuclear missile site is run by a Buddhist organization, the Soka Gakkai, as a peace museum. In 1962, the atomic weapons rolling on the missile was mm. almost launched. They're almost launched. Yeah. According to the uh, spokesman of this military base, said they were ordered to prepare, then uh, received second order to stop it. One of the American servicemen, whose job was to fire the MACE missiles, has since revealed that China was a nuclear target during the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. We were told that we had to launch all the missiles. But we only had one missile headed towards Russia, and we did not see why we should have to involve the other countries. The captain suggested that uh, everybody crack the doors open so it would take less time to launch a missile if the doors were cracked open. One of the launch crews was on the point of firing their missiles when a duty officer suspected the order was false. The launch officer on the B side was told to send two men over there with 45s and to shoot anybody that tried to launch until the situation was resolved. And it would only take like 15, 20 seconds to run the distance between the to a command center. So those two men kept that whole crew at bay uh, while we made a decision as to what to do. And it wasn't very long, maybe two or three seconds later, where a very nervous major came over to the intercom uh, issuing the uh, stand down order. And then we just kind of looked at each other like, we could have exterminated the whole planet. The major who had given the launch order was quietly court-martialed and dismissed from the Air Force. That morning is just as familiar to me and as clear as yesterday morning is. And this is 53 years later, and how clear blue the sky was. And it was just some very light clouds and. The, there was a perfect breeze blowing and a perfect temperature. I did not know what the temperature was, but it just felt perfect. And we were all just kind of taking it in and taking in the smell of the air and the sea and the land mixture together and everything smelled so beautiful. This is very interesting because it shows the cities mm -hmm. in China right. where these MACE missiles were yeah, aimed which, at. Yes. Which, which ones do we have here? This is Okinawa Island. So uh, within 2,000 kilometers, you find Peking or Beijing, Xi'an, UK, and Hong Kong, Shanghai, tai, uh, it's Taiwan, Taipei, and uh, Pyongyang, North Korea, within the range of missile.
This is the work of the Okinawan sculptor Kinjo Manuru. It's a tribute to the suffering and resistance of the people of this island. Active plan to nuke mainland China too, as in the highest levels of the US government were planning for an imminent attack just about 60 years ago. Thankfully, President Eisenhower stepped in and said it probably wasn't a good idea. The US was thinking about responding to China in 1958 when Beijing began shelling islands under the control of the newly founded Republic of China, also known as Taiwan, and which happens to be a US ally. If you comb through, you'll read that US military officials, quote, felt that the use of atomic weapons was inevitable. And, quote, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs suggested that this move would almost certainly involve nuclear retaliation from the Soviet Union. But if national policy is to defend the offshore islands, then the consequences had to be accepted. Imagine that. The consequences of a nuclear war that could have killed millions of people here and abroad would just have to be accepted. This shocking disclosure was quietly made public in 2017 by none other than Daniel Ellsberg, who is now so worried about a looming conflict that he wants to share the documents and the revelations with a wider audience. The former military analyst served as a special assistant to the Defense Department during the Vietnam War, and 50 years ago next month leaked the Pentagon Papers, a classified government study that, as the AP put it, chronicles deception and misadventure by the US in Vietnam. Ellsberg made copies of that top secret study about the 1958 Taiwan crisis at the same time as he did the Pentagon Papers. And now, given that headlines here and abroad are using the W word when it comes to US-China relations, Ellsberg is hoping people and officials in government pay close attention to what escalating tensions with China nearly led to in the past. Given he almost went to prison, Last time he did this, is Ellsberg, at the age of 90, readying himself to go up against the government again? Daniel Ellsberg joins me now. Uh, Daniel, thanks so much for coming on the show. Uh, you held on to these documents for decades and put them online in 2017. They're now getting more attention. Why did you wait this long, Daniel? And why do you think now is the right time to be discussing the fact that the U.S. almost dropped a nuke on China? You know, the truth is that I was prepared to... Uh, release what I had the, uh, on nuclear war planning as soon as the w Vietnam War had ended. I wanted to do what I could to end that war before I brought up, before I went to prison again for uh, on different grounds for putting out the nuclear documents. When you look at the current U.S. government, the Biden administration, people like Secretaries Blinken and Austin, how worried are you that some people today really might want a war with China, that we may inch near towards nuclear catastrophe again? Those are uh, two different things in a way, because I think there are very few people who actually want a war with China, and certainly not a yes. nuclear war. And yet they're prepared to gamble, to sort of poke at the bear in the cage or something, you know, to show our anti-China attitudes, our Cold War attitudes, and that neither Democrats nor Republicans are soft on China, that they're actually taking a stance here um, that actually could bring about war, and that very likely would be nuclear war over China, over Taiwan, as it was in yeah. 1958. It was when I read some of those headlines you just put on uh, a month ago that I thought, wait a minute, this uh, people have to realize what they're talking about when they're talking about war with a nuclear state, China, but and especially accepting the idea of nuclear war, which is insane. But I wonder what the stakes are for you personally. We all know releasing classified documents is against the law. There's a possibility the DOJ uh, could come after you under the Espionage Act for doing this, which you're kind of hoping for, I believe, so you can challenge the DOJ's practice of using that act to go after whistleblowers. You want to take on this risk. So what is your game plan exactly? What are you hoping will happen? I hope that people, on the one hand, on the, uh, on the trial, there's no question that what I've just done is as indictable as in the eyes of the Justice Department, which I think is on a wrong track here in the view of our First Amendment. Uh, 
But in terms of the prosecutions they've brought in the last 20 years, especially starting with Obama, oddly enough, and into Trump and now into Biden, who is still pursuing uh, the extradition of Julian Assange, the fact is Julian Assange did that as a publisher, like the New York Times, in publishing this. There is no basis for uh, for indicting uh Julian Assange that doesn't exist for the New York Times, not only with what he put out, but what I just put out. That's an, I am not inviting an indictment of the New York Times. I think that would be bad for this country, but I am willing to risk so, an indictment of myself. And you're a brave man for saying so and doing so. Uh, you mentioned the Assange extradition and the Biden administration. You said in a recent interview with The Intercept that I didn't start leaking. I was the first probably to do a mass release, and I wanted much more of that to happen as a result. More has happened, of course. You know, Chelsea Manning and Edward Snowden, Julian Assange, reality winner, the list goes on. But Manning spent seven years in prison. Assange, as a publisher, as you say, is facing extradition. Winner is still in prison. Snowden won't return from Russia unless he's able to argue a public interest defense, he says, to a jury which the current Espionage Act does not allow for and which Joe Biden supports, as you say. Do you believe there is an ongoing war on whistleblowers, including from liberals? Yes, uh, one has to say... This is a MACE missile designed to carry a nuclear warhead. During the Cold War...